audience oh, is here. Hey. Hi. How are you doing? Hey. Welcome. I'm, yeah, I'm Jess Singer, Marty Mendenhall, and I'm here with Pete Peterson in his uh, kitchen. And uh, this is our first live stream of um, Marty's Music Kitchen. So, woo! Ooh. I'm excited. First live stream. I know. And, I'm and, so excited. And also, it's the season opener of, of Marty's Music Kitchen, too, right? For, for season for the, season three, season that's three. right. So, <laughs> hi, Pete. Welcome to the show. Hi, Marty. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> I'm, I'm honored to, to be here in my kitchen. I know. Cooking. Your kitchen is really cool. I know you've got everything laid out here. And, um, I mean, everything from spices to, um, you know, crescent rolls and um, all your spices in your cupboards. And I'm like, super excited to figure out what you're going to do with well, it today. We're so. all set. And I, I'm kind of, you know, I learned a while ago to clean up, to set everything out first and then clean up as you go along because otherwise this is too small of a space to really be like Well, yeah, efficient. and I'd say this is a pretty typical and kitchen in yeah. most, most American households, most you know, have, you have a nice room. And right. So, so I, when I first started doing this, I just ended up with stuff all over the place and a huge mess to clean up at the end of it. And, uh, and that's no fun because when you're done cooking, <laughs> no. you want to eat the meal that you've just made. You don't right. want to spend time right. and cleaning stuff up. Anyway, what are you cooking for okay. us today? We are doing a smoked tri-tip beef wellington. And uh, now beef wellington normally is done with tenderloin, um, but this recipe I decided tri-tip because I love barbecue. I love smoking meats. I usually do, you know, I'll do like a 20 pound brisket and smoke it for 15 or 20 hours to until it's just fall apart tender. Um, <laughs> This, uh, this. My is, mouth literally just. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, great. We do, you know, when we when we have rehearsals over here with with any number of the of the bands that I play with that I'm associated with, we'll rehearse over here, and I'll start something on the smoker in the morning, and then by the time the rehearsals done, we're all starving digging and we're all in. digging right, into this, that, this huge well, meal. That's because you've got this. I mean, I asked you earlier where your smoker is, because right now this kitchen, I mean, literally, I walked in this. house House, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so hungry because the there's the smoke of like the smell of the smoke and it's almost like a sweet kind of a flavor to it. Yeah, oh my god, that's apple wood and cherry wood. And you right? put your band through the torture of that smell oh, yeah. for the whole yeah, yeah, for the, the <laughs> rehearsing and everybody's just salivating and we get. Or sometimes we'll get they'll show up and the meat will just be the food will be coming out the smoker and we'll say let's eat first and then rehearse and then. Oh yeah, know, well see that's so, then your mind's not like you know, can we just be done with yeah, this right, rehearsal right, please. Right, right. So, so, yeah. Anyway, so I'm doing a tri-tip instead of a tenderloin for this beef wellington. And I started this, the, the tri-tip um, early this morning. So it was it had about five or six hours on the smoke before No any kidding. Of this. And uh, a lot of the preliminary, when you're smoking meats, you know, of course, the, a lot of the preliminary work takes place before. So I actually started this the night before with my marinade. Um, and the marinade I'm not going to do here because it's, um, I did a, a video on that, which we okay, can Okay, so add last night. So you started the marinade. You put a video of it. Thank you. I made you. a video of, the mar of me doing the marinade. Step us through it. So, so this, what uh, the other step, in addition to the marinade, before it goes on the smoke, is the dry rub. And so I'm going to recreate the dry rub, even though that was already done. But I've got a little container I can save it in for next time. Great. Um, so we have e pretty much equal parts of most of these things. The big right. four is brown sugar, onion powder, ground mustard, and black pepper. And then we those also are the big four, those huh? are the big four. And then we also add a little paprika. It's probably about half as much. Okay, as wait. The, what kind of paprika? Just uh, smoked or This is just regular brown paprika. Sweet? Mild sweet paprika. Okay. Got it. Um, and then garlic powder. And then I add just a little dash of cayenne pepper and some uh, salt to taste. You don't really need a lot of salt because the smoke flavor kind of takes over the saltiness so of the. Is this a grinder? That is a grinder. Okay, just making sure. So, I was like, what do you? How do you crush that? Yeah. Like you know. <laughs> So Mortar we, and pestle. So we dump all these things into this and... So you just use a little container. Yeah. And again, this is the dry rub. Right, this is the dry rub. So I'll just dump all these things in there and then I kind of stir it with a fork and there's the brown sugar especially is, is packed in there so you need to just kind of break it up with the fork. Looks great. And and then this will go on the, on the outside of the meat um, as it's like before it, before it goes onto the smoke. Yeah. You coat the meat with this. Oh, that looks delicious. And and then I'm gonna since I've already done that, you can 
kind of smell it. it. Even has, even though there's nothing in there that would oh, indicate wow. that, but um, it kind of has a little smoky smell it, to it. It does. Well, that's why I was wondering if that. Do you mind if I stir it? Yeah, please. Can I have this job, please? <laughs> <laughs> I like to help, um, and you know, I don't. And now that we're all vaccinated, I can. Um, I feel kind of lucky to do that, but. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, that's why I was asking about the paprika because uh, I was wondering, you know, is that where you get that some of that smoky flavor mm -hmm. from, or if it's all from? What do you use? A Traeger? Oh no, it's it's like a Traeger, but it has it's it uses real wood yeah. instead of pellets, and it has the uh, just a little firebox on the side. Right. So I have uh, ch big chunks of of apple wood and cherry wood, and I just start the fire early in the morning and get it going. So so gonna, that's your preferred combination, huh? Oh yeah, why don't we just do that? I mean, you know. You're making me work with the fork. <laughs> so, shaking it up. So I'm just going to set that aside for later because I've, we've already done this. This was just okay. for the benefit of, of showing you how to, okay. how to do that. Um, one thing I didn't add yet to this was a little bit of salt. And I don't, I don't like to do, use a lot of salt. I just like to use enough to kind of give it some just just to kind of balance everything out well and you know my experience with uh, cooking with smoke is that the smoke actually at, it tastes yeah, it, salty it's, it gives it kind of that that illusion of, of saltiness that that uh, that, that, that doesn't that, right yeah, so, so okay. you take the dry rub and then describe to me what you do with the tri tip well I'll take the, the meat and I'll just kind of it's it's still gonna be uh, I still gonna have marinade all over it and you right? take it out of the marinade and just set it on a on, on a tray and then pat some of this stuff into it just co coat the the whole thing with this stuff okay and then and then it goes out onto the smoker and and then it's just a matter of keeping it on the keep the keeping the smoke temperature between about 225 and 250 right for well, I don't know. This one, I have a thermometer, so it depends on the size of it, but it's usually four or five hours, and then you want the internal temperature to get up to at least 150. Um, the higher, the, the, with the low, it's almost impossible to overcook it. With the, with the low heat like that, the higher it goes, the more tender it will get. And so 150 is, is when it's cooked, and anything more than that is just, it's just going to sit there and keep tenderizing until you're ready for it. Wow. So That's great. Um, so anyway, so so I took this off the smoker earlier this afternoon, and it's okay. just been sitting wrapping in, so wrapped in foil waiting for us. Are you going to do step two now? I'm going to do step two now. I'm going to put these away first because that way I'll Because that way you're all clean. All right, I'm moving out of the way. Yeah. I told them all that you're a fabulous, I mean, you've played on some recordings for me, so you play saxophone mm -hmm. and flute and, you know, all of the wood, the woodwinds, you know, basically. Yeah. Anything with a reed. Pretty um, much. Pretty well, much. Yeah. And then also um, you do orchestration. So you've done actually some horn arrangements for me on recording, mm -hmm. um, and um, you've traveled, you've toured, and I'm, I have to say you're a pretty darn good musician. So oh, thank you. I, I love that, thank and I wanted to say that on camera. So um, anyway, I do want to ask though, how did you get into the to the whole grilling? Thing? Well, I you know I I love the taste of barbecue, and I was fortunate enough to get to tour with some bands that went all over the country about ten or fifteen years ago. Right. And so every place, you know, every region of the United States has their own different version of barbecue. Oh, nice. And so, you know, there's Texas barbecue and oh, there's right. South Carolina barbecue and North Carolina barbecue and New Georgia Orleans. barbecue. And they all have their own take on how, how to do this. And some uh -huh. of them, you know, for example, Texas barbecue is mostly beef and it's mostly, you know, the sauce is kind of not really sweet, but more like spicy and tangy. Um, Carolina barbecue is uh, North Carolina and South Carolina really they use more mustard in their sauce and less tomato so all these actually things, I think I've been here when you cooked something with like a mustard I rub. did it was a that mustard was so it, was a, it was a Carolina I think we did a pork roast and oh, I used right. I used that Carolina mustard sweet vinegar uh, rub and sauce right and that I, was a while ago now and it was a few years ago now <laughs> <laughs> um, and so anyway so every place I went I would sample their barbecue and then I would you know oh wow this is really good and so I'd, I'd come back with with ideas and I'd you know go out to my smoker and just experiment and practice and try to try to see what I could come up with and uh, I, rem I remember one time I'm gonna check this here 
This is our test here. Our, Show the our, people. Oh yeah. We our, have a test. Um, our test one test is, version. Do you want to take that out? Ready to come cool? out? Yeah. I think All right. We so we'll do... pause for a moment. We'll take. This was supposed to be the magic of technology, right? Yeah, we're and supposed to. We put one in and put one in, and then 30 seconds later, take one out. But <laughs> the timing of it didn't right, quite so work. All right. So let's. Um, is my. Don't melt my phone. It's over there on the right. Okay. I'm gonna set it somewhere. So check oh, that look out. At this. And I don't want to be in the way of the hot plate. And I was. Mm -hmm. That's just beautiful, Pete. So we're gonna put this over here. Nummy, nummy. Oh man. If you take barbecue and then rebake it, I can't wait to see what you're actually putting in it. Because oh, I read so what was in it, but this is just such a beautiful, just such a beautiful thing right now, I'm telling you. For those of you who can't see it, it's this just golden, beautiful brown crust um, with all the colors that you want to see on something that's baked and beautiful. So I was in Savannah, Georgia, and we were dra traveling. For our uh, our show the night before had, was somewhere in Florida, and our show the next night was in Asheville, North Carolina. So we had a few miles to go on the road, and so we stopped for lunch at, in Savannah, Georgia, and we didn't really have time to do much. So we just went to this little roadside stand. It was a little, like, wasn't even a food truck. It was just a guy with a, with his smoker in a parking lot. <laughs> just a guy. And uh, <laughs> and so we went and said, you know, this is probably the most authentic barbecue we're ever going to find. So we went and and uh, there's a couple old picnic tables next to this guy and his smoker. Right. And so we went and said, well, what's good here? You know, we're from all over other parts of the country. We want to sample the local barbecue. And he just gets this grin on his face. And he's like, ah, ha, ha, he's like, oh, I've still like, got, got you got now. Some people that I can. And so. So he fixed us up these these uh, pork chopped pork sandwiches, and he's handing them to us. He's ah, y'all gonna enjoy this, <laughs> <laughs> and we did. It was the, some of the best barbecue I've ever had in my life. At a roadside stand with just a guy, no stand. Yeah, right. it was, wasn't even a stand. It was just a guy with a smoker and his and. And uh, so, yeah, so I, you know, barbecue is kind of the universal language of American cooking. And, uh, you know, I played blues festivals where it's like not just a blues festival, it's a blues and barbecue festival. Right. And so, you know, I mean, it's it's part of it's part of the culture. It's part of our, our music heritage. Right. And I'm, I'm really I always really have a great time contributing to 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 the and exploring different things to, to find out, you know, like what what I can do to, to make more delicious food. And so that so. was kind of your first, was that like your moment of this is what I want, I want to recreate this? That was or? one of them. Yeah. It wasn't the wasn't the moment, but it was kind of like brought everything together. Like, oh yeah, I, I love this guy's attitude. He just lives to feed people and make them, you know, something that they are going to enjoy. I and so I said, you know, I mean, I have people come into my house all the time to rehearse. I'm going to start feeding musicians and I'm going to start, you know, making this stuff and try to make delicious food for people as part of my thing. You know, that's actually why I started this whole podcast was because, you know, I have been with so many musicians that it just seems like there's this tie between musicians and cooking, but it's not just that. It's whole creativity. So in season three, we're going to be actually talking with painters and artists and photographers because there's this great tie in between cooking and creativity. And some of our chefs, some of our best chefs, that's all it is. It's art, right? It's getting to know your power of what spices you're going to use and adding it all together so that um, you've got this beautiful piece of art that you just happen to eat. So right. it's the same thing, right? Yeah, right. So why don't you, let's get okay. started and show all us right. uh, what, what we're going to do so next. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, what's called a duck cell, which is a mushroom a paste. What? A one more time? Duck cell. D-U-X-E-L-L-E. Duck cell. Duck cell. The French um, words. Yes. I'm assuming it's French. I'm, it must be. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, so this is going to be a mushroom paste, and uh, and we coat the outside of the meat before we wrap it in the dough. Okay, this. great. So we start with the mushrooms, and these these are just just basic right. grocery store button cap mushrooms. Love it. Looks like um, they're rinsed. It's a it's they're rinsed, and it's about a pound in here. Okay, great. And so we'll just dump them into the food processor. This food processor isn't quite big enough to handle them all yet at once. So I'm going to do some of those, and I'm going to do some of these. Those are the shallots. These are right? shallots, right? And I you just, know, I, I just 
shallot's just like basically a small onion, right? It's a small, really intense onion. Okay. It's like if you took the, a big onion and then made it smaller, but it still has all of its like flavor and it's intensity. It's pizzazz. Yeah. It's pizzazzed uh, onion in a kinda, small form. Kind of like kind of like the the comic book hero Ant Man, where even like the smaller he shrinks, he still has all of his yeah, mass and right. all of his strength. I'm gonna quote you on that. Ant. Yeah. Shallots are like the movie Ant Man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, a, I'm like kind of a comic book nerd too. You should know that about All me. right, there you All go. Right. So then we'll pulse this down. Now it looks like there's enough room to add more. We'll just pop the rest of those in. Yep. Yeah. You're like, I can make it fit. And then I've also got a couple of cloves of garlic that I like to stick in there. Just whole cloves? Just whole cloves of garlic, yep. yeah. The, the machine will chop them up. It's like cooking with power tools here. Got it. And I'm pulsing that because if you just keep running it, then it just chops up the same stuff over and over until right. it's really fine. I get um, that. But when you're... And it's even... I might even want to do something. Let me grab a, a thing here. A thing? Yeah. Is that a technical a word for a wooden spoon? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to just... I'm smelling good in here. a little bit. So again, what we're doing right now is just, for those of you just joining us, just this is Pete Peterson. In. Hello. And uh, right now we're um, making the insides uh, for a beef wellington, and he's got uh, mushrooms and shallots and garlic, and garlic in this food processor, and he's just pulsing it up. Okay, now that's pretty well chopped up. We're gonna leave that there for just a second, put a pin in that, and we're gonna come over here, and we're going to... Oh yeah, put, you know, you should hand me that glass of wine just so it's not oh, in your way. Okay. Thank you so much. I think much. you should, you should, you should have this glass of wine in your hand while you're, I, you know, while this is going on. It's gonna on. help you cook. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is four tablespoons of butter, otherwise known as half a stick of butter. Um, AKA half a stick. And I learned this a while ago. If you want to have your butter not burn and turn all brown, you want to cut it with a little bit of oil that has a higher smoke point. So now we're going to just do some of this. Check it out. Love it. Yeah. So right now what we're doing, um, you have this beautiful cast iron skillet, and we've just put a half a stick of butter, I'm just going to say the generic term for it, uh -huh. um, and a little bit of olive oil in the pan, um, melted it, almost browned it. And then we're adding the mushroom garlic shallot mixture into the pan. Okay, now at this point also, we're going to add... A, I'm going to ask also, this is over like what, a medium? Oh uh, yeah, medium, medium is good. Um, and we're just going to saute those. And then we're also going to add, remember the dry rub I just made? Yes. We're going to add about this much of that. It's like what, about a fourth of a cup? Wow, you're going to dump that all on there, huh? And that is going to be packed with flavor. Oh, it really is, Especially because yeah. you've got the Ant-Man of onions, uh -huh. right? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know, what, I know what ingredient's coming, and I really, really wanted to add it to the title, but you say I can't because there's not enough well, It's it. a secret ingredient. All right, fine. Yeah, well, we're going to have the secret, secret ingredient to the beef wellington coming in just a second, so hang in there with me. It, and if you're just getting here, hi, I'm Marty Mendenhall, jazz singer. This is Pete Peterson. So I say saxophone player, master yeah, of works. all woodwinds. Master what do you want of me to say? the universe. Oh, <laughs> no, oh wow! Another Just another uh, Marvel comics exactly. reference. Yeah, okay. No, I'm a saxophone player and also clarinet and flute and uh, woodwinds and various other instruments. You know, it's little little known fact. Just aside, I actually played flute for five years. Nice, right on. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is the time for the secret ingredient. Um, now this stuff is very squirrely. I should I should add too. By the way, I'm stalling until that reduces a little bit. Um, this shot glass came from a production that I orchestrated the music for. This is Dex Dixon, uh, the full title, Dex Dixon Paranormal Dick. Um, this is my friend Steve Coker, who uh, um, wrote <laughs> and, and conceptualized this guy who's a, a detective that specializes in paranormal activity. So he goes after all the zombies and the vampires and the werewolves uh, and stops them from taking over the town. Um, it was a film, which I did some of the music for, and then he turned it into a stage play. And now he's got Dex Dixon, the comic book, and he's, he's made this into an entire franchise. But anyway, I got a Dex Nixon shot class. Well, like that. that is just super special, so, and I, yeah. I, I'm gonna have to check that out. You should check it. It's, yeah. it's, 
it's it's a pretty cool thing. Anyway, so the secret ingredient yes is, is dun -dun 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 -dun. This bourbon. is Kentucky bourbon. Right. And now, Ooh. the thing that you need to know about Kentucky bourbon yes. is that it's very squirrely and it can go bad at any time and it has to be constantly tested for quality. So we're going to really? test the bourbon for quality. Okay, you test your bourbon. I need to test this wine mm. for quality. I think that's a good idea too. Here, cheers. Cheers. Here's to whatever we're going to eat later. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, wait a minute. Is it good? I, I need a, one more sample to find oh, well, out. Well, you better it's, sample it. it. Might, I'm just it, saying. It's just. Well, you know, you wouldn't want to give uh, the uh, viewers today or the listeners, you know, we want to give them any bad well, bourbon. You know, really, it can it can turn on you just like that. You got to keep keep <laughs> sampling it. So Lessons now, learned yeah. from the master of the universe. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna just let that reduce a little bit. Um, it's you want it to be kind of. There's a lot of liquid in the in the onions and the garlic and and mushrooms and the, bur and the bourbon and the mushrooms. I'm always surprised. Um, so my trick on mushrooms. I don't know if you ever do this, but my trick on mushrooms is actually to um, uh, chop them up and then I'll use whatever I use for cooking and then I freeze the rest so oh. um, I don't usually freeze them cooked I freeze them raw and then like if I'm cooking breakfast or something I do the same thing with onions I just dump them out of the freezer into the pan um, and then I only have to cut the onions once because I hate cutting onions I have one of those super sensitive I'm a crier mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. well, anyway me of, Freeze them. Reminds me of a joke. You know what's the difference between an oboe and an onion? Is this a PC joke? Can you it's, tell this online? I'm sure. I, well, I'll, the only people that will be offended will all be the oboe players. Okay, well, what was the joke again? <laughs> the difference between an oboe and an onion. And the difference between an oboe and an onion. I don't know, Pete. Nobody cries when you chop up the oboe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Me too, but they're good sports. And ah, but on <laughs> All right. You heard it here. Yeah. That's okay. We may only have like two viewers right now. Well, I don't know. We might have more than that. Who knows? What are the chances that our only two viewers are oboe players and they just turned off? Okay, so what, while this is reducing... I'm going to go ahead and get started with my, my wrap because See, that's this always scares thing. me. The pot, I know, it's, why does it it's scare gonna, me? I don't know. It's going to explode. <laughs> so right now oh, what you're doing is you're opening ah, a can of, okay, it wasn't big. It wasn't uh, big. A can of like can of Pillsbury. Pill, just old, just I'm going to read it. Pillsbury Crescents. Pillsbury Crescents. Uh, original. Home for the Holidays. Um, and you're opening those up right now because... Right. Because what we're going to do is... Watch this. This is kind of cool. So I see you have a pan prepared and you've got mm -hmm. a little um, layer Parch of parchment, parchment paper. Parchment, right. So it doesn't stick. So, so now we're going to just unroll these and then we're going to angle them. Oh, check that out. So you're making the outside of your crust right now. Right. The bottom part of the crust, we make that first. So, so you're the kind of making, to... you're going like every other one, layering them, uh -huh. and putting the, the big sides near the middle and the small sides on the outside of right. the crescent roll, right? Right. Exactly. And we'll kind of overlap them a little bit, because what a you really bit. want okay. is enough of, a, enough of a base so that you can set the beef on it and, it, and then... It's already there. You don't have to wrap may, the bottom. May I stir your mushrooms? Yes, please. I don't want them that to help. It's got butter in it. Mm hmm. I love to help. Then I feel like I earned my dinner. Oh, whew, it smells so good in this kitchen. If you're just joining us, this is an actual episode of Marty's Music Kitchen, and uh, we're filming the recording of Marty's Music Kitchen. And this is my uh, this is my handy recording engineer of every evening. He's my guy. This is Todd, and uh, you guys hear me mention him a lot. He's a fabulous cook himself, and uh, I take a lot of pictures of what he cooks and posts it. And I've got a recipe for you that I'm going to be posting pretty soon on um, the Facebook page for Marty's Music Kitchen. So stay tuned. Right? Now we make a layer of prosciutto. Uh huh. I learned to love prosciutto when uh, when I was touring. I was with in Italy with the Harry James Orchestra. Now Harry, they call it a ghost band. Harry, of course, is no longer with us and hasn't been for a long time. But the band has been continued with. Uh, his lead trumpet player, Fred Radke, has kept the band going. Um, and so we did a thing. This was 
a few years ago now, we did a thing on a cruise ship where they had the whole band, loaded the whole big band onto the cruise ship, and we played four shows a night. Right. Um, for the for the cruise guests. Four, wait, back the truck up. Four yeah. shows a night. Yeah. Well, they were. That's a lot of shows. I'd say Pete. four four sets a night, but but each set was treated okay. like its own show. So it was you know we do we did. All a, right, four sets is a little more reasonable, but yeah. I mean I'm used to three sets, but I've never done a four set night. That seems just yeah. like a lot. Well, we then, then again, I'm a singer, and that is a little bit different. It's pretty exhausting for an instrumentalist too, but that's what the contract was, and so that's what we did. But when we got done with that, the so so the boat left Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and ended up in Rome, and, uh, and then we just had the travel agent book us to like leave, you know, a couple of days before we had to fly home, and uh, so we uh, we got to spend some time in Rome, and I and every place you go, they've got this this uh, this antipasto, which is like this huge tray. You know, we think of antipasto here. You go to an Italian restaurant and they give you a couple of slices of pepperoni. Yeah, the little tiny tray. Things. Would you like no. that to put for in fourteen Rome, bucks? It's like a giant, tr like a wooden block with the, the prosciutto and mo fresh mozzarella and like every kind of spiced meat you can find and vegetables and it's like a meal in itself. All right, are you ready for the big review? I am ready. Big okay. reveal. This, so I took this off the smoker at about three or four this afternoon and wrapped it in foil. And you're not kidding, big reveal. So when you pulled Extra it off the bit. grill, you wrapped it in like... I wrapped it in foil. 20 million pieces of foil. Yeah, that's just a, so that it... So I'll check it out. Okay, so out. this was marinated. For how long did you marinate it? I marinated it overnight. Right. And the, my marinade is basically just equal parts of balsamic vinegar and Worcestershire and olive oil. Right. Um, that's, it's a real simple marinade. Right. Um, so, and then marinated it and then coated it in dry rub and then right. it's been on the smoker for, for four or five hours. And then I wrapped it in foil. And so now we're going to put this, and you notice I kind of made this in the shape where it's, there's a little bit more dough at this end. It's tapered it's, at it's one like end. One is bigger there, so so we're gonna have this and these these juices here. You know. Oh yeah! Don't waste that. I'm oh, you're gonna, gonna dump gonna it in the mushroom a stuff. Bit of that. Just to I'm sorry, what did you call that stuff again? The the mix? Duxel. Duxel. That's a new one for me. I gotta remember that. Okay, and I'm just gonna put that over Looks here. Looks delicious. I see you turned the Duxel down a little bit ago. Right, turned, from yeah, a five to a three on your stove. Yeah, Can you guys believe this? And if I didn't mention, it's the first ever live stream of Marty's Music Kitchen, so okay. this is true. Every, anything can happen in the kitchen. So I'm hoping we're going to get through this because I'm starving and I'm going to try the one that was out of the oven. So, all right. so all right. and my show hands, me, show me. My hands are washed again because uh, never, never can wash your hands too many times in the kitchen, you know. Well, especially um, these days, so it's all good. So now I'm going to take this and we're going to just put a little bit, you know. Okay, so you're pulling the mushroom uh, compote kind of thing that you just made, and you're pulling it over next to you. Next to me, right. And I'm actually gonna put a little under this too. So you've got the layers the of the croissants, and then you put the prosciutto, prosciutto and on then, top of it. And then a little layer of this. And it's a good thick layer of the mushroom yeah. mixture it, that you're putting on there, the duck cell. That's right, I'm laying it on thick. Yep. Ah, <laughs> I kill me. <laughs> okay, so then we're gonna put more prosciutto. Actually, we're gonna put more duxel first. Just kind of slat, as Julia Child would say, just slather it all over. <laughs> Have you, have you uh, watched a lot of cooking shows? Have you, as you've, uh, you, you know, know yeah, gotten older? I, I, I like, you know, I like to watch. Um, my favorites lately are the the barbecue competitions. There's like the, the reality TV, like you know, Grill Master or whatever it is, and and you get these guys on there who have been professional barbecue chefs all their life, and they go and they yep. compete for a big prize. So you're so, putting more prosciutto on top of. Right. We're 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 just making layers of. of of prosciutto and duxel are surrounding the meat. And it's kind of hard to get to the sides, but I'm gonna try to stick a little bit here so that it'll it'll climb up the sides when I wrap it. It'll this. wrap around. So you've used, uh, what would you say, like a whole package of the prosciutto? Yeah. 
Yeah. Ish. I, ish. A little bit more than a package. I had I opened up two packages, and then I had a little extra from our test one. Okay. And there's still a little extra in there, so it's maybe like mostly most of two packages. So now you're really so now wrapping gonna, it. Yeah. So now these 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 triangle ends that were overlapping and uh -huh. hanging out from from before, I'm going to wrap those around first. Well, it's actually kind of clever using the croissants because it allows you to, you know, I don't know, wrap more precisely or efficiently. Well, yeah, and it, it's it kind of, I think they, they taste really good too. They've got that kind of flaky buttery thing that just sort of really complements the, mm -hmm. the, okay, and then I'm What gonna, are you gonna do with the rest of the um, Duxel? Um, I don't know, I, I think it would be really good. I'm gonna turn off the burner is what I'm gonna do one thing. Um, I think it would be really good in a risotto or, uh, Ooh, yeah. you know, I don't really, there's there's extra and the, I, I don't really have any plans for it, but you know, I have to wonder um, if this duck cell would also freeze well. I mean, you've you cooked know, it, it down and uh, as long as you had it, um, I mean, you could throw that in a baggie once it cooled or some kind of a container and then use it, or you could even put it in an ice cube tray maybe and use it for soups or sauces yeah, or something. So it could work. You know, I've heard the ice cube tray thing works. I've never actually done it, but, you know. Yeah, I almost don't, I'm not patient enough to be able to remember to do that with my leftovers. Yeah, put it in the ice cube tray and wait, label it. Okay. Last uh, August, I actually made my first um, tomato soup from scratch, which I published that recipe to. You can find that somewhere in the Marty's Music Kitchen thing and uh, feed on Facebook. It was so good that, um, I mean, first I wanted to drink it, even before I cooked it, but it really encouraged me um, to learn more. And so next year I'm gonna hopefully grow more tomatoes or get some that are homegrown from a farmer's market and see what else I can come up with, you know? Maybe I will actually freeze them in ice cube trays. I, let me know how that that comes out. I've, I know you can do that with with uh, garlic, and and there's there's a lot of other a lot of other you things. You can freeze garlic. See, yeah. I don't I don't uh, I've frozen the mushrooms and the onions, but not necessarily garlic. Yeah, they uh, fancy. Okay. All right, cool. So now, now this this is as good as as I would make it if I was making it for for, for guests home. <laughs> well, we have guests. We, we have, have guests, guests live. So I this went, is great because this means we're going to eat the other one really quickly. I went through uh, I went through two cans of crescent rolls, and what I could do if I wanted to get really fancy is I could open up another can and use the dough to make a kind of a design on it, and you know, make it look like right. all cool and stuff. But leaves um, or something. Yeah. Yeah, or candy canes or Ooh. little alien legs. Yes. I've always wanted to make an alien dessert or an alien uh, dinner, but um, I don't I don't know. We don't need to do that right now. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's one final step. Okay, what's this. your final step? And we're putting it in there. Final step is the egg wash. Egg wash, very important. So so we'll just take one egg. So how many eggs are you using? Just one egg. It's, it doesn't need to be a lot. And we just, and this is what kind of makes it, it gives it that shiny golden brown when it comes out. And uh, there's little bits of, of mushroom ducks all around the edges. I, if I was. That is gonna brown up and be nice little crusty deliciousness. I know some people um, add water to the egg wash, and um, not here, not today. No, this is just straight egg. So what's your oven at? 350. And then how long are you gonna bake it? And this is 30 to 40 minutes. I usually check it at 30 minutes and see how golden brown it is. The one thing that's different about this, I mentioned earlier that uh, beef wellington normally is done with a tenderloin, and you'll cut into it and it'll just almost still be red in the center, because it'll be so just, they, it's supposed to be rare. This is all fully cooked because the smoke, it's been, you know, slow cooked for five hours. So it's already basically done, but we're going to heat it up and we're going to make it, give it a nice golden brown crust on there. And awesome. it's going to be so good. So these are pretty straightforward. 
roasted red potatoes and uh, I just sliced all the potatoes and then I drizzled them with some olive oil and some uh, just crumpled up some sprig of fresh rosemary and uh, some minced garlic and then just a sprinkling of Parmesan cheese. We might, we might use some of this extra duck salad as a garnish for the potatoes maybe. That'd be good. Okay, let's... This is just me. Hungry. Waiting. It's deliciousness. <laughs> Check it look out. That. Look at that. Okay. So oh you know, yeah, that looks with, so with beautiful. With tri-tip, you well, you want to always cut against the grain. This is going to be like the tip of it. Um, you want to cut against the grain with a tri-tip because it's it's that'll make it so that the the, ten, the tenderest part of the meat is going to be. Easy wow. To, this easy. could be really a meal for guests, and it, it wasn't that hard. But for people who don't want to spend all day smoking uh, a tri-tip, how would you recommend they cook it? Well, what, one of the things you can do, um, and I've done this before, it's, I always like to smoke it, you know, but um, if you wanted to save some time, and let's say, or if you don't have a smoker to, at your disposal, um, you could uh, you could just rub it with the dry rub, marinate it, do all that stuff, and marinate it and rub it with the dry rub, and uh, and then sear it on a, on a hot skillet, mm -hmm. and then and then do all the duck cell and the wrap and everything like that. Okay, that's it's going to be know. a little bit more rare in the middle that way. That's but okay. I know I have a guy who would prefer yeah. that. So. <laughs> okay. so and you notice this. This 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 pink area here is what they call the smoke ring. In barbecue competitions, they one of the things that they are judged on is is how complete the smoke ring is. Wow. So what happens is the smoke infuses the meat and it it, it keeps that red color even though it's cooked. Wow. And then you can see how it's also it's it's cooked inside too, but the smoke um, keeps the the original reddish color of the meat. Love it. Boy, that is a really, I mean, it, it doesn't really take that long. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's fairly. I, we talked our way through it. It's so, a know. little bit labor intensive for the, the crust and stuff, but it really is not, you know, it's a fairly simple meal. All right, awesome. Well, go. let's go um, in the other room and let's take a bite. All right. All right. So, what are we calling this again? Smoked? This is Smoked Tri-Tip Wellington. Smoked Tri-Tip Wellington. All right, here I go. I'm going to try this. Finally, after all this, it was like you made me go to rehearsal. <laughs> and I'm, mm-hmm. 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 The flavors just explode. I mean, I the know. prosciutto and the so mushrooms much. and the the uh, the mighty shallots. Yeah, right? There's a lot of a lot of prep involved. You know, the, you cook the meat the night before and the, then earlier in the day, and then you just do this at the at the at the last of it, and. and so if you're if you're on it with your prep and and, and work ahead and do most of the the preliminary mm. stuff ahead of time, then uh, yeah, it's easily it's it's a fairly simple finish. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. Pete, where can people um, find out like where you're performing? My website is just petepeterson.com. Peterson I'm also S E N on the end, right? right? Yes, thank you. And uh, I also I I announce a lot of my gigs on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, then just follow me on Facebook or friend me on Facebook, and I'll, I'll post where I'm playing when. Um, that's pretty much one of the only things I use Facebook for a lot regularly. But uh, That's great. There you go. Thank you. Well, I'm going to say uh, for the podcast, Pete, thank you so much for being my guest today. I really appreciate it. And this was fun. We should do it again sometime. I would love to. Thank you for having me. And and, and thank you for coming over and and, uh, and per uh, sharing a meal with me. Uh, this, this is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so, and for my live stream audience, I do want to give a shout out and say, Pete, um, in season three, um, we are going to publish your recipe in a cookbook eventually. But right now, we just released the season one cookbook. Um, yay! From Marty's Music Kitchen. It's a beautiful little work of art. Uh, it's got the QR codes and recipes and lots of pictures. And uh, 
right now um, we are running a benefit for Birch Community Services. So if you go to martymendenhall.com and just click on the cookbook link, um, every uh, cookbook that you purchase, a portion of it will go to Birch Community Services, which uh, supports people with um, in a grocery style food atmosphere, helping them with food, and then also um, ask them to take financial courses so they can get back on their feet for good, which is awesome. So, um, and I have several packages with the cookbook in it um, at martymendenhall.com, so that's a little shout out for them. And Pete, I think we should wave goodbye to our audience and say thank you so much for joining us today and uh, for being part of our first live stream. And I think we need to feed our crew too. Because uh, well, well, yeah, they gotta feed them too. So anyway, wave. Bye, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Happy holidays. And now we're just going to keep on eating. All right. Yeah.